Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing something new. I'm going to start a series I think called Mini Bursts, which is me reading three books in a category. So today's category is based off of my mid-year freakout tag, which I will leave linked down below. At the end, when the question says, what books do you need to read by the end of the year? Two of the books that I had in my thing are from Japan. So this means that I've owned them over two years, and these are the books that are the oldest on my TBR. So I thought I would combine with one more book and do a Japanese lit reading burst. So I'm hoping to read three books in two days. They're short, so like, it's no big deal, hopefully. So this is No Longer Human by Osamu Desai. This is a young man's coming of age story in Japan. The Sea and the Poison by Shisaku Endo. This is about a Japanese doctor who performed live experiments and torture on American soldiers. Uh, this is fiction, I believe, but it's supposed to be super like dark and get into the psyche of the doctor. Uh, and then the last one is Lion Cross Point by Matsusugu Ono. Uh, I got this because it was mostly a cover buy, but also it's about a boy who had something really bad happen to him and he moves to this island and it's how he deals with it. Yeah, we'll just get this done because I need to read more translated books. I need to get these off of my TBR because they've been there forever. They're like crusty dusty and like they need to get read. So the next time I'll chat to you will be when I'm wrapping up some reading. All right, so let's have a little chitty chat about No Longer Human. I'm 40 pages in and I have to say this is the first book I've read by Desai and I'm thinking it will be the last because there is a whole category of Japanese writers, um, usually older, but there's one modern one in there, that I find their writing to be horribly pretentious. Um, so this counts as that. Yeah, it's just like not my not my favorite writing style. Um, and then this one we're following a young boy who's not like other boys <laughs> in that he's just, he doesn't understand other people. He is always goofing around, but he's tortured inside. He never goes to school, yet he's always the boy who does the best and wins all the awards. He always writes and behaves terribly. Everyone thinks he's funny, but he just can't connect to humans. It's a bit of a like a Nick Pixie Dream Boy situation. Woe is me, every day is hell. I can't understand humans, but like they're top of their class, their family loves them. They come from middle to upper class. They know no struggle. And they even, like he even is saying like people who can't feed themselves like at least their pain is less than mine because they know where their pain comes from and i'm like okay slow down like you're fine so i don't know <laughs> not really loving it but luckily um i don't know if you can see but the margins are absolutely huge so this is like 170 pages but i'm already like 40 pages in so i think this shouldn't take that long. Hey guys, it is a few hours later and I have read some more of No Longer Human and absolutely not. This book was published in 1958 and it definitely shows its age. I just got to a point where I had to read this line to you guys. I never could think of prostitutes as human beings or even as women. They seemed more like imbeciles or lunatics, but in their arms I felt absolute security and I could sleep soundly. <sighs> like, this main character is the biggest piece of human rubbish of all time. <laughs> um, and I hate him so much. If this wasn't a classic, like a Japanese classic, I would definitely DNF it. Um, I have kind of a thing where when I read classics, especially Japanese classics, I do like to make my way all the way through just so I can compare them uh, to other Japanese works that I have read uh, because there are so many works, original works, which this is one of the older ones, which cascade and influence other ones. So 
I do want to finish this and thank God it's short because he is just a trash human. Oh yeah, just kidding. The real reason that I wanted to update you guys is because he's saying that because he slept with so many prostitutes, he is now giving off killer lady vibes and um, he really like is great with women even though he doesn't even like women. I mean he likes women but he doesn't even like women, men, he doesn't like people in general. They just flock to him because they're just so attracted to him and I'm just like ew. This is just so obviously blatantly what Desai probably wished his life was like. I will keep reading this but am not loving it and I would say by this point I'm about at least a third of the way through I would have DNF'd it uh, if this weren't a Japanese classic because I've already explained but yeah it's kind of trash. Hi guys it's been another few hours and I am quite a fair bit of the way through this book so I am on page 106 and I'm hating it honestly hating it um, our main character is the most loathsome man I can imagine. He continues to be long suffering even though he's not really suffering. Like he's burning through all of his allowance money that his father gives him and then he's complaining and saying he's poor. He decides to commit suicide with this woman. She dies, he doesn't, more's the pity. And then he basically just continues to lie and get out of um, everything that he ever does wrong and it's he's the worst and I just so so hate him and I had a flip through to the beginning the forward in here and I heard I saw some phrases that made me so mad and then I couldn't disagree with more like this is a masterpiece like it really captures the essence of what it is to be human and I'm like what hot garbage <laughs> are you talking about? Are we reading the same book? Because mine is, I think, filled with rubbish. Did you get the non-rubbish version? Like, maybe it's different in Japanese, but doubtful, really doubtful. Um, no, this main character I'm not for. He continues to belittle women and he basically says like he never listens to them because women can't talk because they just don't know what to say and they're bad at like speaking. Um, yeah, he calls prostitutes like whores and imbeciles <laughs> and uh, yeah, no, he's just like a trash person, so. Um, that is my wrap up so far. I will be finishing this tonight because I will not carry this through to another day. I refuse. Um, so I'm gonna power through and the next time I see you will probably be when I'm done with this uh, piece of hot garbage. Um, I just wanted to come out right now because the sun is setting, so it's really pretty out here. This is our um, a part of our front yard, so I'm not at a park, okay? I'm not outside of my own front gate. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, I hope that you guys are having a nice day and that your reading is going way better than mine. And also, if any of you have read this, let me know your thoughts down below because I have read, I think, quite a lot of Japanese literature it was my minor. I also happen to love it, but there are just some books which I hate. The male gaze is so disgusting. It's like oozing out of this book. Okay guys, I have so many thoughts about this book. I just finished it and damn, why is this so beloved? I have no idea. Like, I know that I've put spoilers here the whole time. Basically in the third act, the major thing that happens is that our main character leaves the woman who was helping him and feeding him and giving him all the money and letting him like bankrupt her uh, for another woman who he marries and then when he sees her being raped by someone, he doesn't help her and instead is like, oh, woe is me, how will I ever trust again? <laughs> Like, ugh, he's the worst. He leaves his wife, gets a morphine addiction, and then bangs the really ugly, crippled pharmacist. And he says it over and over how much he doesn't like her and he just wants the morphine. And he's just like, garbage, <laughs> garbage. And 
It ends basically with his family putting him in an insane asylum, which like, fair enough. Uh, but then they let him out after a few months, buy him a house on a hot spring, and are like, can you just stay here and stop besmirching our family name? Okay, thanks. And then basically it's him at the end being like, woe is me. Life was so hard. I never had any friends. I never understood humanity. And the whole time, okay, this asshole didn't really work. When he did work, he drew pornographic cartoons of women, or he lived off of the means of women, or he was demeaning towards women. Like, what the hell is this book about? I would be really interested to know why people love it, especially if you've read it and you are a woman. Like, how can you read this hot garbage and be like, this is great. Like, I would be offended if, I don't know, we had to read this in like a literature class for university. I would be like, who put this on the syllabus? Cause this ain't right. Um, so yeah, just this is not it, fam. This is not it. So I'm gonna end up giving this one one star. Uh, and it's so measly because honestly, I would have DNF'd this long ago if it wasn't a classic. And I wanted to see if the end had some importance. It doesn't, it just gets worse. Um, but yeah, this is probably my lowest rated book that I read all the way through this whole year. So this is going great. So I think I'm gonna go Lion Cross Point next because I think it is not going to be as depressing as this one, which is about torture and depression. So hopefully this one will be about not torture and depression. So I'll probably read a little bit of this before we have dinner and I will get back to you guys with an update soon. Hi guys, I'm back with another update. It's been about another hour or so and I am a third of the way through Lion Cross Point. This reminds me why I love Japanese literature. There's just something about it that they don't say things and it leads you to think things are creepy. And I love it so much. We're following a 10 year old boy named Takaru who you're not sure what happened to his mother, to his brother, but for some reason he has come to this island for the summer and it's his mother's childhood home. And as he wanders the island, he starts to have this vision of someone that's maybe following him around. And you're not sure if it is one of his ancestors who died prematurely, or if he is having like a mental breakdown and seeing some stuff he shouldn't be. Um, he's also having the creepiest of dreams of all time. So you're not really sure what's happening. And it's because there's something about Japanese literature, I love it so much that there's just that little hint of creepy that you just, it's just unsettling. Do you know what I mean? So I'm already 40 pages in. I am really liking this a lot. Depending on where it goes, this could be a four, four and a half star, maybe even five star. We'll see. Um, but yeah, I just really love it. It's also really evocative of Japanese summer, like the heat, the cicadas, the like you just really want ice cream and yet all the vending machines just have soda. Like it just really makes me feel like I'm back in Japan. Book is just giving me all of the coastal feels right now and I am just having a great time reading it. We are about to have dinner. We're gonna have some tater tots, which in Australia they call them potato gems. <laughs> Isn't that adorable of them? And after that, we are going to watch some Killing Eve because we just decided to start season three and I love it. I am a sucker for Killing Eve. It's one of my favorite shows of all time. Hi guys, it is the next morning. So last night I actually did finish Lion Cross Point by Matsusugu Ono. Um, this is a three and a half star for me. You do learn more about his backstory, but then it's also unsure if he's dreamt it, if he's having like kind of uh, PTSD or if it really happened. Um, and I will say that the ending kind of failed to stick it for me. So when I was about maybe 30 pages from the end, 
I thought that this book could have gone either way. It could have gone all the way up to four and a half or down to three and a half, like depending on how well the ending was executed and what it wrapped up. And this is kind of a classic Japanese novel uh, for my experience because a lot of things are left open-ended and I don't mind some open-endedness, but there's a lot left here, which is kind of unexplored. I did really enjoy the reading experience though, and I really do recommend it if you're looking for more of like a, a quiet novel with like a little sprinkling of like creepy dark elements, but then also it doesn't ever get too, too dark. I'm just glad that this was way better than the first book I read. <laughs> so the second book that I'm gonna pick up today, um, cause it's, it's morning here now, so I still have the full day ahead of me, this is The Sea and Poison by Shusaku Endo. Hey guys, it's a few hours later. Um, I thought I would just update you on The Sea and the Poison. So if you see little dogs running around, they're my little dogs. But um, yeah, this book, the first chapter opens and a young man has moved to the countryside and he has like this lung infection and he goes to the country doctor and he's usually scared of getting um, the... I think it's like a tube inserted between the ribs because usually it's very painful unless the doctor is really experienced and when he goes into this doctor he's like oh no and he gets scared about going in because the doctor's place is like grimy and it's a really small town and he's like great sometimes if the doctor messes it up it can cause another lung infection and then you could die so he's not looking forward to it but then when he actually does go in the doctor is so good that it's painless and he starts to wonder why a country doctor would be such an amazing doctor with such skill. So then he starts to investigate the doctor in his past. And apparently the doctor was on trial years ago for wartime dissections and basically medical torture of captured American soldiers. So at that time he was like uh, an underling doctor. So he didn't like die or go to jail forever. Instead, uh, he went to jail and then he stayed in the country because he just can't deal with what's happening. And then the next chapter follows on from when he's a young doctor, like a junior doctor, and it really details like how he's trying to save his patients even if they are cases that can't be saved. Um, and then one day he notices that a like army truck pulls up and delivers some American soldiers and then at the same time you learn that the head of the hospital um, has promised the army use of some of the like clinic wards uh, to house soldiers so I think the next chapters are going to be really dark I love his writing style it's very accessible and also like I'm really pulled in I read a third of it and yeah, I think that this one is going to be great. It is many hours later and uh, we are two episodes of Killing Eve down and it's an amazing time as always. And then after that, we decided to read... Jack, will you stop licking your pee-pee? Dog mom problems. Um, okay, hold on. I gotta start over. So I did finish The Sea and the Poison by Shisaku Endo. I really like his writing style. Uh, this was supposed to be the tale about a doctor who performed vivisections on American captured soldiers during the war um, while in Japan. This should have been blurbed as uh, that same thing, but instead of following just one person, you're following everyone who was in the operating room at that time, which I think is why I only gave it three stars in the end. The first few chapters, I was hooked, um, but then right when the momentum was building, we take a pause to learn the backstories of like four other characters. And I was like, you know, that's just like really unnecessary. And I honestly don't care. So that's why it gets three stars. Also, you only see one of the three surgeries that you know are coming. I think it is interesting because the, the way that the different characters deal with this dissection of the American soldier impacts everyone differently. So like some people completely lose their shit and other people are unaffected. And then the way that they're punished for it later um, 
is kind of not explored, it's left vague, but you know in the beginning what has happened to some of them. I think it would be an amazing discussion book for like a book club, but how much did I enjoy it truly? Eh, like three stars. But I really like his writing style and I will be reading more from this author. I will chat to you guys over breakfast with my final thoughts on all of these books. Hi guys, it is the next morning. So this is day three and so I finished all three of these books in two days. Granted, they are very small, so the longest one is about 180 pages, but I'm still pretty chuffed. I'm pretty freaking pleased with myself, so I'm just gonna do the wrap up really fast for you guys. So, um, I'll do them in order that I read them. So, No Longer Human. I honestly hated this book and I don't recommend it to anyone. I'm glad I read it because it's a Japanese classic, but uh, I can safely give it away and donate it because this is not it for me. One star. Uh, next, I read Lion Cross Point by Matsusugu Ono. I really enjoyed this. It's a very quiet novel with a few creepy elements thrown in. Uh, the ending just didn't stick for me though, and a lot of things were left unresolved. So. I give it three and a half stars. I really enjoyed it. I do recommend it, but um, don't go into it looking for full resolution uh, because you're definitely not going to get it. And then the last one that I finished reading just last night is The Sea and the Poison by Shisaku Endo. So this fell a little under my expectations, but I was really pleasantly surprised um, to have found an author that I will read more from. So I gave this three stars. So I'm really chuffed because these two authors, um, Endo and Ono, I will definitely be seeking out other things that they've written. Um, so I'm really happy about that. And then, you know, Desai, I will never read anything from him ever again. Uh, yeah, so I am just really excited. <laughs> and if you guys have any um, mini burst ideas that you want me to do, let me know. I have some ideas um, in the works for whenever I'm just feeling in a reading slump. I think it's a good way to kind of force myself out of a reading slump. Um, but I decided to do the first one with Japanese, which I know I usually like, and also they're short. So um, yeah, if you've watched this far, I love you. Thank you for watching. So if you've made it this far, leave an octopus and a lion emoji down below if you can. Um, I think that that would be showing me who's really watching to the end. And I will make sure to give you lots of love in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you are having an amazing day and that you pick up one of these two books. Not this one. <laughs> and I will chat to you guys in another video soon. Bye!